is bitter there I'd rather talk to her than disappointed Though she's not quite as fun as good and mad You better put her on Still a lot of time, 4.6 billion years After being a lifeless rock for about 600 million years We got single-celled organisms Imagine that, it took 600 million years just to get the most basic forms of life started on this little ball of dirt. And those simple single-celled organisms ruled the Earth for 3 billion years. Think about that for a second. Now, the Earth, the vastness of the entire Earth, populated by nothing but single-celled organisms for 3 billion years. It took that long for basic multicellular life to emerge. That's a lot of time. During that time, of course, evolution was constantly in play. Photosynthesis did not just magically occur along with water plants. Many single-celled organisms make use of photosynthesis. So after three billion long years, we finally have simple multicellular plants. Then after about 400 million more years, near the end of the Precambrian period, we got animals. Real simple animals. But it's progress. Evolution is always in action, always slowly shaping the course of life's progress. Uh, then we had arthropods, fish, land plants, insects, amphibians, and reptiles, dinosaurs, mammals, birds. Then about 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs died out. And even after that, it took another 63 million years for the first humans to appear. By humans, of course, I do not mean Homo sapiens, but any members of the Homo genus, beginning with our earliest ancestors in Africa. That would be Homo habilis. Eventually came Homo erectus, perhaps a million years ago. They looked a lot more like modern humans than previous ancestors. Modern humans have only been around for about 250,000 years, and that's nothing. That's the blink of an eye. Look how far we've come. It's like the tortoise and the hare. Indeed, slow and steady wins the race, and evolution has been acting slowly and steadily throughout the Earth's entire four billion years of life. It is only in comparatively recent times that we've had multicellular life. My brother once told me that he didn't like Star Trek because it was unrealistic. I thought this to be a funny observation and asked him in exactly what way did it strike him to be unrealistic and why this should bother him. He told me that it seemed unlikely that the Enterprise would run into some trouble or adventure every single day. He said he would love to see an episode where they just sat around drinking coffee. I responded by telling him that even though it was every day to us, the Observer, it was not every day to the Enterprise. Of course, there were days when the crew just ran drills, played Parisi squares, or spent time on the holodeck, but we weren't watching them on those days because that would get boring really quickly. In much the same way, I can understand evolution and the Big Bang seeming unrealistic to some because of the amazing nature of the science behind them. However, we've had a lot of time for evolution to work on Earth. When we look at everything that has happened, it seems like too much, but when we stop to reflect upon the vast amounts of time it has taken for all this to occur, it suddenly seems much more likely. I used to be a very devout Christian, and when I did learn about evolution, I thought I could reconcile it with my religious beliefs. I thought, well, evolution was inspired by God, or it was the way he chose to create life, but really the fundamentalists at least stick to their guns, you know. It does make more sense that the universe was created then it would be a much faster, more direct process if it were indeed only 6,000 years old. And radioactive dating, fossil records, and geology confirm this, it would be a very powerful argument for creation. But they don't. They go against it by instead telling us that the universe and even the Earth is so old that it boggles the mind. Another common argument is that the laws of nature work so wonderfully and everything is so mathematically precise. How could all this come from chaos? Well, first of all, chaos is not random. That's how. Lay people often confuse chaos with chance. Chaos is actually very orderly in its own way. Like functions of quantum mechanics, which appear very random to us at the subatomic level, but as the scale is increased, the perceived chance element grows smaller and smaller, and reality seems more and more stable, until we get to modern Einsteinian large-scale physics and the sturdy reliability of relativity. In exactly the same sense, but reversed, seemingly random occurrences and events are in fact governed by many orderly functions on an extremely small scale. The mere fact that we can't always observe all of these happenings or fully comprehend their effects on our scale does not diminish them, and it remains a fact that chaos is actually the outward manifestation of order. That might seem like a point for religion, except that if one stops to think about it, wouldn't life be less orderly if there were a god? 
There would be no need for laws of nature, let alone life that evolved slowly in a universe that obeyed such laws. If there were a creator, if there was an omniscient and omnipotent God, wouldn't he, she, or it simply create in whatever way they like? Why not have the gravitational constant change at random? Why not shake things up and make things interesting? If there is a God, and I highly doubt it, then it must be a deist God who started everything and set it in order and then either died or turned his back on his creation. It seems much more likely to me that time and the laws of nature simply kept at it until something did happen. Once we are here, it is natural to wonder how we got here. It is perhaps just as natural to have a desire for an explanation that strokes our egos and makes us feel special. But we must come to see the light of truth, that after so much time, our being here is no longer an unlikely outcome. Given enough time, it is an inevitability. Let me explain further. I promise I'll stop after this. The final point I would like to raise is this. Whether or not you believe in a cyclical universe model from the brain theory or otherwise, even if you believe that this is the first and perhaps only universe, you must concede that we can only measure time after the birth of the universe. Before the universe was created, how does one measure time? One cannot. This means that, as unlikely as the Big Bang may seem, it was certainly inevitable, because before it occurred, there was infinite time. If there was nothing before, then time was meaningless, and there is no limit to how much time there is before the Big Bang for the Big Bang to occur. This means that, as unlikely as you may think the Big Bang to be, even if you think it had only one trillionth of one trillionth of one trillionth of one percent or less, be my guest, of a chance to occur, it actually had to occur eventually because before the Big Bang occurred, there was all the time there was ever needed for it to occur. Our inability and unwillingness to comprehend the fullness of time is the greatest roadblock to understanding the truth of the inevitability of the universe's creation. And once it's understood to be eventually inevitable, no matter how seemingly improbable, all necessity for a divine creating intelligence is removed. Thank you for your time.